Hello and welcome to your yoga class for this week. Well done for clicking into this video and for taking the time to do this practice. I am so happy that you're here. This is the fourth installment in this series of Yoga for Stress Relief. So if you have been following along on these classes, you might know by now that the body tends to store stress in the lower half of the body. So for this series, we're focusing a lot on hip openers. We're also focusing on the belly region, doing some twisting and strengthening of the core. And we're focusing on some standing and balancing poses. These are the most effective yoga poses to help you to move stress out of the body. And of course, the breath is also one of the most powerful tools that we have to help to calm the mind and release stress. So with all that being said, that is what we are focusing on again for this week. You will need a strap this week, so you can use a belt or like the belt on a dressing gown, anything at all that resembles a strap. Towards the end of the class, we're going to be opening up the hamstrings and we'll be using a strap to help us to do that. And as usual, you might have some yoga blocks nearby if you have them or just some cushions or pillows. So go ahead and get yourself ready and I will meet you back here when you're ready. Begin by finding your most comfortable way to sit, sitting on a yoga block or cushion if you need to. And once you're there, you might just relax your gaze or close your eyes. The hardest part is over now that you're here. So just give your body permission to relax, dropping your shoulders, loosening up your jaw, relaxing all of those tiny facial muscles. Now imagine your hips just dropping into the mat or whatever you're sitting on. And imagine that there is a magnet in your hips that is being pulled down towards the earth. As your body starts to feel a little heavier, a little more relaxed, bring some awareness to your breath. Breathing, if you can, in through your nostrils. Opening your mouth to exhale, sigh it all out. Just repeat a few more times, maybe encouraging the breath to become a little bit deeper. And again, before we move on into our breathing exercise, I want to really honor and congratulate you for showing up and for doing this practice. You might extend some of that gratitude to yourself as well. With your next exhale, you can slowly open your eyes again or just bring yourself back. Our breathing exercise for this week is Alu Nam Valam, or alternative nostril breathing. We focused on it a lot in our previous month, but if you weren't there, that's fine. I will run through it again. So the idea of this breath is to breathe in and out through opposite nostrils, and that has a really calming effect on the mind, and it's really useful in those kind of stressful situations if you can take a minute or two just to do this exercise. So to begin, you're bringing your thumb and index finger on your left hand together, and then just let your left hand rest wherever it feels good to do so. On your right hand, you're folding down your middle and your index finger. So your ring finger and your thumb is available here to close off your nostrils. Now in a moment, we'll bring our right thumb up to our right nostril and breathe in only through the left nostril. Then you're bringing your ring finger over to your left nostril and closing both nostrils, holding your breath. 
Then you're going to release your thumb so your ring finger is keeping that left nostril shut and breathe out only through the right. Then we'll breathe in right, hold the breath and hold both nostrils, breathe out left. Breathe in left, hold, breathe out right. So I'll help you out with the counting. If that was a little bit confusing, we'll go slow and then I will leave you to do some of the counting by yourself. So let's find that nice, comfortable seat again, a tall spine, relaxed shoulders. You can close your eyes here and just listen or you can keep them open and follow along. Bring your right thumb up to your right nostril. Breathe in left for one, two, three, four. Hold your breath, hold both nostrils. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale right, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale left, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale right, two, three, four. Hold, six, seven, eight. Exhale left, six, seven, eight. Inhale left, hold, exhale right. Inhale right, hold, do the next few rounds at your own count. Holding and exhaling for eight, inhaling for four. The next time that you exhale from your left nostril, you can remove your hand, breathing normally and just noticing any differences within your breath. When you're ready, you can gently open up your eyes again. So we'll move into a little bit of movement. We're going to start today just by stretching out the neck. So really simply just look over one shoulder, only going as far as you can here. Take a big breath in and a long breath out. And then we'll move to the other side, looking over the opposite shoulder. Come back to center now and bring your eyes down towards the floor so you can stretch the back of your neck. And now eyes can come up to the ceiling, open up your throat.
your head can come back to center. Bring your right hand down to the right side of your mat and do a big rainbow across with your left hand, keeping that left seat bone pressed towards the floor. Press your left hand away from you and look up at those left fingertips. Take a huge breath in here, open up your left lung. When you're ready to exhale, you can switch to the opposite side, this time keeping that right seat bone pressed into the mat. Big breath in, expanding your right lung. On the exhale, we'll come back to center. Come into tabletop pose now, making your way onto all fours. Spreading your fingers wide apart, having your shoulders above your wrists and your hips above your knees. So remember, we are like a solid oak table here. We're really strong. We're not like those little Ikea tables, which are a little bit flimsy. So press yourself away from your mat, engage your core gently, and then we'll transition into some cat and cow. So with an inhale, point your tailbone up, drop your belly to the mat, bring your chest forward, look up, exhale, point your tailbone down, round your spine, tuck your chin to your chest and drop your head. And let's keep going. Each inhale takes us up to cow pose. And each exhale rounds us down to cat. Depending on what time of day this is for you or what you have been doing today, this might be your first opportunity to really drop into your body and see how things are feeling or even just to notice your body today. So try pay attention to each vertebrae as you move through. Notice the effects of the movements on your body as well. You can continue with cat and cow, or you can start to do those little sideways movements where we're moving our hips from side to side, making C shapes with the body. You can also scribble a little bit, making circles with your hips or just asking your body what it wants in this moment and then acting accordingly. Once you feel satisfied that you've made those sticky spots a little less sticky, you can come back to center, back into tabletop. And from here, we'll move into tiger pose. So it's just like cat and cow, except this time as you inhale, start to point your right toes up towards the ceiling. And as you look up, imagine that there's a magnet in the sole of your foot and the crown of your head. So they're trying to pull towards each other. With an exhale, round your spine and pick your knee up towards your nose, dropping your head and trying to imagine there's a thousand dollar prize if you can get your knee to your nose. Now let's inhale, bringing the foot back up, magnetizing it towards the crown of the head. Exhaling, rounding down, touching your knee to your nose, if you can. 
Let's do two more like that. When you have your knee towards your nose, pause for an extra few seconds. Push yourself away from your mat and really pick that knee up a little bit more as you drop your head down. Last inhale, now bring that foot back up, point it up towards the sky. Find your balance here and when you're ready, reach your left arm out in front of you. Remember to engage your core slightly to keep you stabilized here. And you can just stay like this playing with your balance or you might bring that left hand back to find the right foot. Kick your right foot up into the left hand so your left shoulder blade is being pulled back. And you can feel that opening through your left shoulder as you take a big breath in. On the exhale, you can release everything back down to the mat and we'll repeat on the opposite side. So inhale, left foot up, look up, exhale, round down. Inhale. Exhale. Now you're pausing when your knee is towards your nose, you're dropping your head, you're crunching everything together, feeling that strength and fire that is within your core. Inhale, pick your left foot up towards the sky, find your balance and reach your right arm out in front. Stay here or come back to find that right foot gently kicking it up into your hand, opening up your shoulder and your quad. Take a big breath in, send it wherever it's needed more. And then exhale to come back down. Now you can sit back towards your heels for a moment. We'll just relieve the wrists, give them a little bit of a break. You can always extend and flex your wrists here, or your hands rather. And now we're coming back down for a tabletop plank. So you're back into your solid oak table, really strong, fingers are spread wide to protect your wrist. And you can gently grip the mat with your finger pads here. So it's almost like you're making a little suction cup out of your hands keeping the heel of your hands pressed into the mat as well. Now we're lifting our knees up off the mat, just letting them hover, creating that fire in your belly. And I like to think that this fire and this heat burns away any stress, any yuckiness that is caught up within your body. So let's just stay for a breath or two. Maybe I lied, maybe a little bit longer if you can. If not, don't worry, bring your knees back down. With an exhale, now knees can come back to the mat. Sit back into a brief child's pose. Find your breath and just notice how your body is feeling. Now press your finger pads into your mat again. Use an inhale to pull yourself up. And from here, find a high plank. You can modify if needed by keeping your knees on the mat, only staying here for a breath or two. Now you can lower yourself completely down onto your belly, or you can drop your knees, chest, and chin. 
When you're there, widen out your feet, slide onto your belly and scoop up into extended cobra. Keep your elbows bent, look straight ahead or diagonally up and take a big breath in now, opening up the front of your body. With the exhale, curl your toes and send your hips up and back into downward facing dog. We'll hang out here for a minute. You can stretch the backs of your legs, sway your hips from side to side. Again, just try to find those sticky spots in your body and use this time to get it out. Walk your feet towards your hands, nice and slowly. Eventually coming into a standing forward fold, keeping your knees bent, dropping your head and hands low towards the mat. We'll just hang here for a breath or two. Tuck your chin to your chest and just one vertebrae at a time. Noticing every curve, slowly start to roll up. Once you're standing, roll your shoulders back and down. Press your feet firmly into the mat again. Have your palms facing forward. Open up your chest by puffing it out slightly in front of you. Take a big breath in, growing your spine a little taller. And a long breath out, slowly coming back again. Now we're coming into chair pose here. So your big toes will point towards each other. Your feet are making a triangle shape. Then you can begin by having your palms together at your chest. Sit back into that invisible chair, keeping your tailbone pointed down towards your mat. Look down at your feet and make sure you can still see your toes peeking out from beneath your knees. See how low you can go here without putting too much strain or stress on the body. Now you can reach your arms out at a 45 degree angle, pushing those fingertips away from you, but keeping your shoulders relaxed. Gaze down at the floor, or you can look out between your hands. Bring your palms back together at your chest. And from here, bring your left elbow over to hook out to the outside of your right knee. Gently start to twist your torso as if you're trying to align the center of your chest with your thumbs. Now maybe you can gaze up towards the ceiling, challenging the balance a little bit here. Take a big breath in and out. Now we're, from here, we're going to come back into a low lunge. So you can bring your hands back to the mat either side of your feet and then step your left foot back. Or for a little bit of a challenge, straight away, you can slowly step your left foot back behind you. Once it's there, then drop your knee and we'll all meet here in this low lunge. Keeping our front knee over our front ankle, we're maintaining this twist in the torso, aligning the chest with the thumbs, and looking up. With an exhale, bring your hands back down either side of your front foot. Step your back foot in slightly and bring it onto a 45 degree angle, making our way into warrior one. Before we come up though, magnetize your feet towards each other so they're trying to pull together. 
you're pressing into the outer edge of your back foot and your front knee stays aligned over your front ankle. Take a breath in and sweep your hands up, relaxing your shoulders away from your ears. Feeling that stretch through our back hip flexor. So keep your hips square to the front of your mat. Holding here for a few breaths. Doing really good work for all of those tiny muscles within your feet helping to keep you balanced and stabilized. And of course, cultivating that warrior energy as well. Now with an exhale, open out into warrior two, making your back foot parallel to the back of your mat. Arms are on the same level if you can get them, so you can peek at your front and back hand. Try to figure out if they are in a straight line to each other. Keep your front knee bent over your front ankle and then squeeze your shoulder blades gently together as you look over your right fingertips. Keep breathing and keep pulling those feet towards each other. You're still firmly planted in the knife edge of your back foot. From here, start to straighten up your front leg without locking your knee. Then glide over your right leg as if you're trying to touch a wall or something that's in front of you. With an exhale, drop your right hand down towards your right shin and reach your left hand up towards the ceiling. Here in extended triangle, you're trying to touch the mat and the ceiling at the same time. Rotate your chest up towards the sky so you feel that gentle twist within your waist. As you look up at your left thumb here, keep breathing. Now drop both hands down either side of this right leg and we're going to walk our hands towards the center so we come into a standing forward fold. Now I'm just going to switch directions. So it's going to look like this. We have both our hands in underneath our face and you can point your toes to all point towards the long edge of your mat. Then from here, just drop your upper body down towards the mat. You can use the outside of your feet, the knife edges of your feet to stabilize and balance yourself. Bring your left hand directly underneath your face here on the mat and then paint a big line up as you lift your right hand up towards the sky. Look up at your right thumb here. And again, we're finding that gentle twist of the waist, squeezing out any tension. Drop your right hand with an exhale and then inhale to lift the left hand up following the thumb up with the eyes. Exhaling to come back down. Now both of the hands can walk back towards that right foot. Step back into a high plank. Exhale to lower down onto the front of your body. Inhale to scoop up into extended cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll pause here, let the body digest all of those poses that you've done. You can always drop down into child's pose here if you want to.
from here, make your way back into standing forward fold, walking your feet towards your hands. Now tuck your chin towards your chest and slowly curl back up into mountain pose. Finding your best mountain here, whatever feels good for you. Keeping that connection to the ground through your feet and extending the crown of your head towards the sky. Take a big breath in, expanding your body in all directions. Exhale, open your eyes and bring yourself back. Now we'll repeat that sequence on the left side. So we're coming back into our chair pose, palms together at the chest, sitting back, checking in on our toes and pointing the tailbone down. Extend your arms out at a 45 degree angle. Feel all that power now coming through your body. Again, burning away anything that we don't want. Palms can come back to the chest and this time your right elbow hooks to your left knee, twisting to align the thumbs with the center of the chest and maybe gazing up here. Preparing to step back into a low lunge, either bringing your hands back to the mat, then stepping your right foot back, or go straight for it if you can. And we'll all meet here in this low lunge. Still gently twisting our torso, as we gaze up, find your breath here and notice how the journey of your breath into your belly is much different in this position. On an exhale, hands can come back either side of our front foot. We're stepping our back foot in a little bit to set ourselves up for warrior one. Before you come up, magnetize your feet together, press into the outer edge of your back foot. Inhale to sweep up. Hips square to the front of your mat, you're feeling it in this right hip flexor. Now pull all that energy up from your feet, cinch your waist, expand your chest, and then send it out through your fingertips. With an exhale, open out to warrior two, back foot parallel to the back of your mat, front knee over front ankle. Remember, it will try to fall in here, so just encourage it to come straight out. Hands may be on the same line. Let's check in on them and see how they look. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and gaze over your left fingertips. Feet and legs are still working hard here. Keep pulling them towards each other. Now start to straighten out your left leg. Tilt over towards the left, letting your waist lead the way. Left hand comes down towards the shin. Right arm reaches up and we look up at that right thumb if we can. Be conscious here not to collapse. Keep your spine as straight as you can. So only bring this left hand down as far as you can continue to do that. And then maintain that gentle twist of our torso. Lots of twisting in this class. Now we're getting rid of all that belly stress. Now 
one more big breath in reach for the sky and for your mat and with the exhale both hands can come back towards this left foot we're walking them to the center to come back to our wide leg forward fold dropping head shoulders hands keep a little micro bend in your knees here try not to lock them now let's draw a big circle with the hands so left hand stays to the earth right arm reaches up to the sky as you look up take a big breath in exhale to come back down inhale left arm reaches up exhale back down walk your hands to your left foot step back into a high plank exhale to come down onto the front of your body however you get there is fine inhale reach up extended cobra exhale downward facing dog pausing here again letting your body digest the poses that we did find tension and then just gently press it out here keep pushing yourself away from your hands to amplify the stretch through the back of your body keep breathing your mind might drift away but just attach your awareness back onto your breath Now with an exhale, you can drop both knees back down onto the mat and come to lie on the back of your body. Coming now to rest for a moment in Shavasana pose. Allowing your arms and legs to take up as much space as they need. Palms are facing up so your shoulder girdle can drop into the floor you can start to bring yourself back now maybe making little movements with your fingers and toes and now we're going to make our way into a shoulder stand and then there will be an option to bring the legs back behind us for plow pose so if you have yoga blocks you might have those blocks ready behind you that is because you can rest your feet onto the yoga blocks if they don't make it to the mat or to the floor. So if you want to watch what we're doing in shoulder stand first, we are starting lying on our back. We're bringing our feet up towards the mat and then we're lifting the hips up. There goes my phone, which is my sound. We're lifting our hips up over our shoulders as best we can and then trying to make a straight line with the legs. Now, once you're in your shoulder stand, you don't want to move your neck. So just keep looking up at your feet. So let's do that together. We're starting on our back. Lift your feet up. Now start to hoist your hips up as best you can. Bring your hands onto your lower back and they're gonna support your low back now. 
You can start to walk your hands a little bit closer to your shoulders, which will help you to straighten up your spine and that will help you to straighten up your legs. Now look straight up at your feet and you can keep the soles of your feet parallel to the ceiling. Once you feel steady here, find your breath. You're letting all the blood flow down towards your brain, which as you might know by now, has a really calming effect on your mind. Now, if you want to come out of shoulder stand, if you don't want to do the plow pose option, what you'll do is bring your hands back down onto your mat and then use your arms like brakes to slowly bring your spine back to the mat. Now, if you do want to come into plow pose, start to bring your feet back behind you. The wider you have your feet, the easier it should be to get them to the floor or to your yoga blocks. And you want to keep your hips directly above your shoulders here. Try not to let your spine round too much. We're only staying here for a few breaths. Now we'll come out of plow pose the same way. So your arms come back to your mat or to the floor. Palms are facing down. Now try not just to crash back onto the earth. Try to just move one vertebrae at a time. That's a really weird sensation for me. I don't know how you feel, but it always feels like you're never going to come back down. But now that we're here, we'll make our way into bridge pose. So your heels are coming directly underneath your knees. Reach down for the back of your heels with your fingertips. Press your lower back into your mat and now lift your hips up. Try to touch your chest to your chin without moving your head and use each inhale to expand your belly as much as you can. This provides a really nice stretch for your spine in the opposite direction and you're still allowing all that blood to flow down towards your head. Keep lifting your hips up, just a few more breaths. Don't let them sag down. Now you can start to bring your spine slowly back down onto your mat. When your hips land, bring your knees up into your chest. Wrap your arms around your legs for air releasing pose. Don't cross your ankles here. Keep your feet beside each other. And if you want to stretch out your spine an extra bit, you can lift your nose up towards your knees. Staying here for one minute, compressing all those internal organs and again, stimulating our core regions, squishing out whatever we don't want to take with us. Keep cultivating that deep belly breath, even though it's harder when your belly is constricted by your legs. Now from here, we're going to roll ourselves up. So we're sitting on the mat and we're going to do what is called easy pose, but it's not easy. So don't feel bad if 
you feel that way too. You're just sitting cross-legged on the mat. And as always, when we're sitting on the mat, you can sit on a cushion or a yoga block. So find your seat bones, press them down into whatever you're sitting on. Take a moment to lengthen up your spine. Take a big breath in and out. Then from here, we're hinging at our hips, walking our hands away from us. And once they can't go anymore, then just drop your nose down towards your mat. And you'll start to feel this within your glute and your hip on whichever side has the foot in front. So let's just pause here, breathing into that tightness using our inhale to loosen it up and our exhale to get it out of the body. Before we move on, take a moment to relax your shoulders, loosen up your jaw, undo tightness from your facial muscles. Connect to your breath again if you accidentally neglected it. Use a breath in to push yourself away from the mat. Once you're up, then switch so your opposite foot is now in front. Hinging at your waist again, walk the hands away and drop your nose. Both sides of the body are different, so we have to observe, observe closely here and just see what this side of the body is able for. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can turn your palms up towards the ceiling so you're dumping less weight into them. Now we'll inhale to press ourselves gradually back up. Once you're there, you can undo those legs, shake them out, do whatever you need to do. And now we're coming back down to lie on our backs. Make sure you have your strap nearby. Once you're there then, we're going to take the strap and wrap it around the sole of the right foot. Now you're holding your strap in your right hand, aiming to keep your right leg and your right arm as straight as you possibly can. 
even though we're gripping the strap with our right hand, we want to use as little muscular power as we can. So try to relax your hand, even as you maintain your strength on the strap here. Now we'll just relax here. Left arm is doing whatever it needs to do to get comfy. Bring your awareness to your breath. Finding those tight sensations within our hamstring. Inhaling to ruffle it up and then exhaling to blow it out of the body. Now you can start to open your leg out towards the right, keeping straight hand or straight arm and leg as best you can. Don't worry about how far over your leg comes and try not to look over at the foot. Keep looking up towards your ceiling. Just starting to target the hamstrings from a different angle here staying for 60 seconds in total or however long you can manage. Now with an inhale, lift that right foot back up to center. Take your strap into your left hand and let your right hand relax. Now bring your leg over towards the left. And again, left arm and right leg are staying straight. Don't look at the foot. Don't worry about how far over it goes. Keep looking up and just breathe here for the next minute. Now we'll start to lift the foot back up. You can remove the strap and allow your right leg to rest on the floor. Just take a second here, feeling any differences within the two sides of your body. Now we'll repeat on the other side. So wrap the strap around your left foot. Hold it in your left hand and keep left leg and left arm as straight as possible. Find your breath, find those tight pockets and just use the pose and your breath to loosen everything up.
Now we'll start to open the leg over towards the left, keeping straightness if we can. Keep looking up and keep that connection to your breath. Next breath in, can lift your leg back up to center. Take the strap into your right hand, relax your left hand and bring your leg over towards the right. Now we'll make our way back to center. We'll undo the strap from the left leg and we'll come to rest in Shavasana pose. Check in on your body and see if it's asking for anything. If there's any little movements or stretches that it needs. Feel free to do those now. You can do some windshield wipers or maybe bring your knees up towards your chest if that's what you need in this moment. You can also set yourself up for final relaxation now. So if you want to grab a blanket or do whatever you need to do. Make sure you're really comfortable. Let your arms and legs explore until they find a really relaxing place to rest. Drop your collarbones to the mat. Loosen your jaw. Relax your facial muscles. Take a long, slow breath in and just feel your breath paint all the inside of your body. And as you exhale, you can let the awareness of your breath go and just let your body breathe as it naturally does. Now bring that awareness down to your feet. Feel the heaviness of your feet. Your feet are now relaxed. Feel the heaviness of your knees. Now your knees are relaxed. Feel the heaviness of your hips. Your hips are now relaxed. Feel the heaviness of your shoulders. Your shoulders are now relaxed. Feel the heaviness of your hands. 
Your hands are now relaxed. Feel the heaviness of your head. Your head is now relaxed. Lift your feet a few centimeters off of the mat. Feel how heavy they are and then drop. Lift your hands a few centimeters up. Feel the heaviness of your arms and drop them back. Turn your head to one side feeling its heaviness. Turn your head to the other side. Feel its heaviness. And bring your head back to center. Your entire body is now relaxed, growing heavier and heavier. It is now healing, recovering, rejuvenating. So we'll take the next few minutes to drift further into this relaxation and then I'll let you know when it's time to come back.
Now you can slowly start to bring a little bit of awareness back into your body. Finding your breath again, reconnecting to yourself. In your own time, you can come to lie on the right side of your body. Taking a few breaths here, as we did at the beginning of the practice, really honoring and celebrating yourself for coming and for doing this. Thanking your body for everything that it was able to do. From here, we'll push ourselves back up into a seat. Finding the most comfortable way to sit. Once you're there, maybe closing your eyes or relaxing your gaze. Taking a long breath in through your nostrils. Open your mouth to exhale. Blow away any cobwebs. And just do that a few more times. With your next exhale, you can start to open up your eyes again. And we will officially end our practice here. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this practice. Please let me know. Feedback is always welcome. And I will see you next week for our fifth and final installment of this series. And then we're moving on to a new theme for the month of February. So take care, have a great week and I will see you next time.